Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome back to our iOS development series, Tinkering with Table Views. In this video, we're gonna learn how to pass data from one view to another. Right now, we're able to go from our table view. When the user selects on it, we're taken to the next view. However, what we need to do now is we need to populate this view with the data from the table view cell that they pressed, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. First thing first, in our item view controller, we're gonna create three variables. These variables are gonna be the data that gets passed from our view controller, it's gonna be stored in these three variables. So we're gonna say var name is gonna be a string. We have, whoops, looks like an indent error. Var image is gonna be a string. And var count is also gonna be equal to a string. Now you can obviously initialize them as empty strings. You can do that, or you can say this. Doesn't really matter for now. All we're doing is we're creating three variables. Now the next thing is in our view controller, when this perform segue function gets called, we need to pass data to our next view controller. Now, the way we can do that is by another function. This function is known as prepare, okay? So over here, we're looking prepare for segue, sender, any, all right? So it's gonna ask us to be an override function. So let's go ahead and add override in front of it. And now in our code, we're gonna have to go ahead and access this view controller. So we're gonna go ahead and say that var vc, vc stands for view controller, type item view controller, okay? should be equal to segue.destination as item view controller, okay? So let me just go over what we wrote. Bar VC is a variable, VC. Again, it's type item view controller, and it's equal to the destination of our segue. So wherever this segue, any segue that's, that gets called from our application goes, we're saying that destination has to be an item view controller. If this code good, if we have multiple views and multiple segues, no. Instead, what we should do is we should say that if segue.identifier is equal to item, which in our case it is, then only do we want to set the, uh, then only do we want to set the view controller to be of type item view controller, okay? So if our identifier is item, then we create this variable VC, and then what we can do is we can go ahead and pass in the three variables or the three items that we have. So let's go ahead and save the index of what the user selects in a variable. So we're gonna go ahead and say var selected index is equal to an int, okay? Let's go ahead and save that. And then over here, we're gonna say perform segue. Before we perform the segue, we're gonna say selected index. So self.selected index is equal to index path.row. So this tells us what row did the user actually select, zero, one, or two. After that, what we can do is we can call that position of that index in our database arrays to actually get the values. So once we have our view controller, we can say that vc.name, okay? So our name variable that we have in our item view controller, that should be equal to our name array, item name, and then the position. And our position we called as selected index. Fantastic. So vc.name should be equal to item name selected index, okay? vc dot, the next one is count is equal to item count and then selected index. And last but not least, vc dot image is equal to, let's go ahead and get the name right, image name, selected index, okay? So what's happening here is that we access the view controller that our segue is heading, okay? And then once we get that, we're going to go ahead and set the three variables we have in our item view controller, which is name, image, and count, so it looks like our count is an integer. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this equal to zero. So name, image, and count. And we're going ahead and saying that whatever our value is from our database, go ahead and store that as the variables in our item view controller, all right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead in my view to the load, I'm gonna just say print name, print image, and print, print count. Let's go ahead and see what happens, hit stop. Let's go ahead and run our shopping list application and let's see if any data actually gets passed in our application. So here we have our Apple image, we have an image, the name is Apple, count is four, click it and fantastic. So what we did is we were able to pass data from our view controller to our item view controller successfully. So we got Apple, Apple JPG and four. So instead of printing these now, we can go ahead and set the name, set the image, set the count of the labels and images we have. So let's go ahead and do that over here. Well, let's delete this and say self.itemName.text should be equal to name, 
self dot item image dot image should be equal to UI image named and the name is going to be in this case our image and last but not least we have self dot count dot or item count dot text should be equal to count colon and then using the structure we've learned from before pass in the count variable so all we're doing now guys is instead of printing out the three values we're setting them so that this uh, this label our image view and our count all get updated so let's go ahead and run this and let's see what happens here is our simulator let's give it a few seconds and fantastic so here's our table view we have apple orange and banana um so it looks like I screwed up the ordering a bit. Uh, looks like apple is apple, but orange is banana and orange is banana over here as well. So I'll go ahead and fix that. But let's go ahead and select apple and awesome. So we have apple and we have our apple image and we have count. Fantastic job. Now, if you notice that our apple image is slightly, um, it looks a bit weird. So what we can do is we can go back to our main.storyboard and select our image view. And instead of saying scale to fill, we're going to go ahead and say aspect fit. So that preserves the variation and makes your image look much, much better. And now I'm going to go ahead and go back to our view controller and fix this small issue. So we have apple for apple.jpg, orange 10, and then over here I need to use orange.jpg. And then over here I'll just say banana.jpg. Fantastic. So let's run this one more time. Let's go ahead and try a different fruit. So our application is compiling. Here is our simulator. Both succeeded. Fantastic. And great job. So now orange and banana are aligned. Let's hit on orange and great. So we have our orange, we have our orange image and we have our count. Fantastic job guys. In this video, we learned how to pass data from one view to the next. I hope you guys learned a lot. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.